No, I don't want your wife to find out about this. She won't. She is working hard right now. Let's just have fun. Oh my god. I know already. I muttered to myself in disgust. I left work early and came home. Then I heard voices that sounded like something out of porn coming from my bedroom. My life all of a sudden became a daytime soap opera. Unaware of my presence outside the door, the voices were getting steamier. Yes, more jesting. What a naughty girl. Burning in hatred, nausea surged through me. I lost him for calling his mistress a naughty girl while we had a small daughter. I looked down at the lazy underwear in the corridor and clenched my fists. Then I took a deep breath to retaliate. I don't mean to brag, but I thought we were a picture perfect family. My husband Justin, our daughter, and I lived harmoniously. He was a very handsome father. Our daughter Kat was a little shy, but growing up healthy. She was about to start kindergarten, and I was sure she would get over her shyness. My relationship with my mother in law was also excellent. We lived nearby, so we often visited each other. Justin's parents divorced a long time ago. His mother Susan lived alone. She was a very independent person and enjoyed her own life without being dependent on her only son. I learned of her good character as soon as I met her for the first time. Justin and I met on a dating app. We both enjoyed camping and started talking through that connection. Eventually, we started meeting in real life and became an official couple after we went camping together. Marriage popped into both of our minds at one point. I was honestly worried when we were about to meet each other's family. Meeting people on an app was normal in our generation, but it was not the case for my parents. Frankly speaking, they were reluctant at first. And Justin must have felt bad. On the contrary, Susan was the total opposite. That's nice. I envy you guys. My generation didn't have such a way of meeting people. You don't think it's weird? No way. Times change, and so does the way of encounters. Besides, you seem to be a nice girl, so I can trust you with him. I was so relieved to hear that, and the tears welled up involuntarily in my eyes. From that day on, we got along so well. It sounds so stuffy to be called Mrs. Morrison. Call me Susan. After she asked me to call her by first name, I think we got to know each other better. She was a curious person by nature. And learned to be familiar with SNS in no time. She started learning photography at the same time and uploaded the photos she took on her page. She even took cats out often, telling me to cherish my alone time. They seemed to enjoy each other's company and I could take a breather while they were out. I was surprised at how well our marriage was going. Although I had been a full time housewife since our marriage. When Kat started kindergarten, I took a part time job. I had been a licensed pharmacist, so I quickly found a place to work. I didn't mind being at home, but it was fulfilling to make use of my qualifications. Susan came to visit me once in a while, and my work days were quite enjoyable. However, something terrible happened to those peaceful days. That day, I had a sore throat from the morning. By lunchtime, I was coughing non stop. Hey, are you okay? It's not that busy today, you can leave early. I'm sorry, may I take your word for it? Of course, get better soon. 
I thanked my manager and left work quickly. While waiting for the elevator at my apartment, I sent a message to Susan asking if she could pick her up. I was relieved when she immediately agreed. I had been working extra shifts, so maybe I was just getting tired. I thought to ask Justin to come home on time as the elevator door opened. The moment I got into it, I frowned at the overwhelming sweet scent of perfume. I wondered if the person before me was wearing it. It was an unusual scent. I got off my floor and arrived at my door. As soon as I opened it, a pair of unfamiliar pumps came into view. Next to them were Justin's leather shoes, which were not supposed to be there. You're kidding, right? I went inside quietly and gently closed the door. I looked down the hallway and saw a flashy, shocking pink coat thrown on the floor. I struggled to keep myself from collapsing and walked toward the bedroom. My suspicions were confirmed. No, I don't want your wife to find out about this. She won't, she's working hard right now. Let's just have fun. Oh my god. I know already. I came home and heard voices that sounded like something out of porn coming from our bedroom. My life all of a sudden became a daytime soap opera. And aware of my presence outside the door, the voices were getting steamier. Yes, more Justin. What a naughty girl. His voice disgusted me so badly, I lost him for calling his mistress a naughty girl while we had a small daughter. I looked down at the lazy underwear in the hallway and clenched my fists. Then I took a deep breath to retaliate. I'm home, I shouted and stamped my feet on the spot. At that moment, the voices in the bedroom died down. The reaction was so obvious that I was amazed, and I almost burst out into laughter. Is that you, Justin? I continued, and finally heard a voice from inside saying, Shit. That pretty much explains the situation correctly. It was unjustifiable, and I was standing in the doorway. The only place to hide was in the bedroom closet. I was curious how he was going to excuse himself. Then I heard the balcony window open. I didn't think they would escape outside. I thought it was such a childish act as I opened the bedroom door wide. There, I saw a messy bed and hastily closed the curtain. I stared at the window and saw two bannocks peeking through. Stiffing a giggle, I went near the window and called Justin's name again. I found a small brand name bag under the bed. There was a small wallet and a phone inside. The phone displayed a message from Justin. Room 502 was the room number of our apartment. It was clear that he had invited the woman home. However, this alone was not enough to prove his adultery. There was no way to unlock the password to her phone, so I looked at his phone, which was tucked between the sheets. I easily opened it using Kat's birthday. There was an icon I didn't recognize. When I opened it, I found that it was an app that deleted messages after a certain amount of time. He had been communicating with her there. I took a screenshot and sent it to my phone. I also took a picture of the driver's license that was in her wallet. I had all the evidence I needed. Then I received a message from Susan. The content was that she would be arriving soon. Although I hesitated for a bit, I sent the evidence of Justin's affair to her as well. I added a note asking her to look on the balcony. After a while, the doorbell rang. I opened the door to find Susan frowning. For some reason, 
She had an SLR camera hanging around her neck. Hi, Debbie. I left Kat with the superintendent, so she didn't see anything. I appreciate that. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. It's okay. I never thought I'd see my own child looking so foolish. Where is he? Still out on the balcony. When she went into the bedroom, Justin and his mistress were frantically banging on the window. He was sniffling from the cold and shouting apologies, but I was a little horrified by the maniac look on his face. I took a step backward, and Susan took strides toward the window. Debbie, what do you want to do? We can leave them out like this. Oh, um, if he agrees to a divorce, I'm willing to let them in. Oh no, I apologize. Let's talk first. You want to spend the night there? Be my guest. Oh, okay. I agree. As soon as she unlocked the door, they rolled into the room. The way they were covering themselves with the blanket, shivering and shaking, was almost a little pitiful. But Susan was relentless. Sit, you stupid thing. At the sound of her voice, both of them straightened their posture with pale faces. Justin, you know why your dad and I divorced, right? Tell me. It was his infidelity. No way. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard the reason for the first time. His parents split up because of his dad's affair, and I couldn't believe he did the same thing. She fiercely scolded him, and then did the same to the mistress as well. To my surprise, she was married. She was his ex co worker who had left the job after getting married. Susan continued to lecture them for the next hour, and then the mistress left wearing the soaking wet clothes. When I tried to speak to him about the divorce, Justin started saying I had no proof. I showed him the screenshot, and Susan took pictures of them on the balcony with her camera. She had originally brought it to take pictures of Kat and use it at a moment's notice. I was surprised at how well it captured the scene without any blurriness and was impressed by her skill. After that, Kat and I stayed with Susan. A week later, she and I took the divorce papers to Justin and stood firmly in front of him. Susan introduced me to a lawyer who explained that I could get alimony for sure. I made it clear to Justin at that point. Perhaps that was why he was reluctant to go through it. I mean, it was only for the last half a year or so. Why can't you forgive me? Are you serious? I'm just saying that you should take that into consideration. You are so stubborn. Don't make excuses for yourself. Susan yelled at him, and he finally started reading the papers. I had learned that she was unimaginably scary when she got angry. After that, I, under the advice of my lawyer, requested temporary court orders for custody and child support. I heard that he was depressed about the amount of alimony, but that was no longer my concern. The case was sparked unexpectedly. Look, Debbie, it's Justin in the video. Hmm? Susan showed me her SNS screen, which showed a video of the full scene on the balcony that day. I checked the account name that uploaded it, and it was my next door neighbor. Come to think of it, she talked a lot about herself being an influencer. Justin deserved what happened to him, but the video was taken from an angle that could easily identify the apartment building. I thought other tenants would have been inconvenienced. I requested to the platform that the video be removed, which was easily granted. Not only that, but 
the neighbor's account was removed as well. It became a big deal somehow, but I was relieved to have it done anyway. A year later, my divorce is finalized, and Kat and I have been living in a new apartment. I have a new full time job now. I'm busy with work and raising my child. Although I was worried about her, she has adjusted to her new environment more easily than I expected. We continue to have a good relationship with Susan too. After the video fiasco, I was much appreciated by my ex neighbors. The supposed influencer had been bragging about herself everywhere and was seen as a nuisance. Some of Justin's co workers saw the video and rumors spread quickly. He was asked to resign for damaging his company's image. He also ended up separating from his mistress. He apparently visited Susan for help, but she turned him away by dumping a bucket of water on him from the balcony. Just imagining the scene was amusing, and I couldn't help but laugh. Now, there's laundry to do. Today is my day off, and Kat is out with Susan. It's the perfect day to get the accumulated chores down. I try to go out on the balcony to sun the pillows, but my legs freeze. I see Justin frantically tapping on the window. I was so desperate that I didn't think of it. Looking back, he could have attacked me. He has lost his job and his credibility now. There might be a chance that he resents me and comes to my house. I chose an apartment building with a good security system in place and a room with a balcony facing the main street. I realized that the scars he has left on me are much deeper than I thought. I take a deep breath and go out on the balcony. It's a beautiful day with a clear blue sky. I feel my phone vibrate in my pocket. It's Susan. Wow, so nice. There's a picture of Cass smiling broadly in a flower field.